Hey everyone, my name's Reed. I'm a senior conference ambassador for the summer, and today I'll be giving you a tour of Gibson Hall. But before we head inside, I wanna talk about what it's like to live on Central Campus and just living in Gibson in general. So if we take a look around, you can see some of our surroundings. Um, but over here is going to be a couple of different dining options. First of all, you see a Starbucks, so it's really convenient if you wanna wake up in the morning and go get some coffee. That is convenient. How do you take your Starbies? How do you take your Starbucks? How do I get my Starbucks? Uh -huh. Usually I get a black cold brew. Really? Okay. It's just very simple, cheap. Nice, Usually, yeah. Very easy, um, but yeah. Um, there's also 1021, which is a major dining hall on campus. It's usually open for breakfast and lunch up until like three or four. And then you also have what we call Founders, which is going to be in Founders Hall. Mm -hmm. But you can go there for dinner and get sushi, um, where the Walgreens are. It's pretty great. Um, also, just being on Central Campus gives you a lot of access to the buildings around here, and it makes everything very, very accessible. I think it's really, really convenient. Um, but with that being said, we're just going to go ahead and head inside. Okay, well, let me introduce myself too real quick. Christopher Spencer, I'm with uh, Housing as well. And we have several people already chiming in. Love to have you watching. Uh, let us know where you're from so we can wave hello to wherever you're calling from or, or tuning in from. And then we've had a request to look at a room or two, a couple different rooms. So we'll try to honor those as best we can. Yeah. It might mean us going up to floor three, but awesome. we'll see how that goes. Yeah, okay, we'll head inside. Okay, we'll go ahead and one thing I do want to point out is that all these dorms do have fobs, so you'll get something that looks kind of like this when you move in, mm -hmm. and you'll scan it on one of these black boxes, unlocks the door, and you can head in. Mm -hmm. Thank you for fobbing us in. Hey, from Little Rock. See, it's from Little Rock. Good to, yeah. yeah, right there in the central so, part of our state. Yeah. Um, so as we move in here, you can see that there's kind of a common area space before you get to the front mm -hmm. desk. There's chairs to come and sit, some nice paintings on the wall. As you can tell, Gibson is one of the older buildings. Um, just to give you a little fun fact, this is originally known as Razorback Hall, which I think is very cool. If you look at the top of Gibson, you can actually see like a golden hot like Razorback on the top. Yeah. And I think it's very cool. Um, but Gibson Hall is one of the oldest and finest residence halls with rich history and tradition. Gibson is the second oldest residence hall outside of Carnal Hall, which now functions as a hotel. You may yeah. get a chance to go to it. Right, they got um, a nice little restaurant in there yeah. too. Uh, but as we head up here, we'll take a look at the front desk. Mm -hmm. um, your front desk is going to be crucial for any major questions that you have while you're here. It's usually staffed by an adult desk admin. Mm -hmm. um, they will sit behind this desk. If it's not staffed by them, it's either staffed by an RA or it's closed. Um, I'm not completely sure on packages. Um, usually your desk admin will have your packages. There's a chance that you, if you live in Gibson, you'll have to pick them up at Gregson. Mm -hmm. You can definitely check that on your housing portal. Though. Yeah, you can go to, um, under the housing website, look under services, and then mail and packages is the page you want to hit. It tells you exactly where to get that stuff. Yeah. So we're just gonna move over here and kind of look at the laundry area and take a look at the mailboxes and what you'll be getting mm -hmm. into. Yeah. But as we walk over here, I also wanna say that Gibson Hall usually houses a, about 98 female residents, mm -hmm. which I think is pretty cool. But here are our mailboxes. So in your housing portal, you're going to get a three digit code. So you'll be able to use this and use your three digits and get it in there. If you have any trouble, scan this. It'll show you a video and other information on how to do that. Yeah, um, and uh, when it comes to mail, I'll say also that uh, my details is the area in the yes. portal where you'll find a lot of that information. My yeah. details. Um, before we go right into the laundry room, I just want to say that there are several different um, water fountains on each floor, and I think that they're really awesome. You can come and fill up your water bottle and do all that stuff, and I think it's very neat. And also just very convenient if you're headed out, especially in August when you move here, and it's very, very hot. <laughs> yes. Um, but now let's move into the laundry room. Uh -huh. So as we come in here, there are three washers and four dryers. There's also an ice machine and a couple of vending machines as well. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing that we want to talk about with Laundry is the Speed Queen app. So as you move here this summer, you're going to need to download the Speed Queen app, which will allow you to get two washes per week. After those two washes run out, I think it's $1.50 to get another wash that week. Yep, two washes, two dries per week. It's all exactly. preloaded, so really, you can spend it at your own discretion. Exactly. So you could do, you know, 10 in one week if you wanted, but know that then later in the semester, you won't have access to that. Yes. So, but you can, as, as Reed points out, you can refresh that at about $1.50 a cycle. So yeah. if you want to run a washer and a dryer, then that would be $3 that you yeah. can add through the app. And what's really convenient about the app is it'll tell you when your uh, laundry is done, washing or drying, and it'll let you know when some, uh, one of the washers or dryers is also free, so you don't have to waste your time coming down here and um, walking back up the stairs, because Gibson does not have an elevator. On it does not on its three floors. Yeah. Do you mind pointing out uh, the wireless pay that we have there? Yeah, so definitely uh, whenever, uh, 
these vending machines, you can just kind of put your card up there, mm -hmm. scan it, and then you'll be able to kind of select something. If I were going to select something, it would be a Diet Coke, <laughs> um, which is pretty nice. Um, ice is free, everything. And yeah. that's pretty much all the things I can do. And we do project. take Razor, uh, razor Bucks yes. now. So you can get Razor Bucks yeah. and you can use that. Awesome. All right. Well, I guess we'll head up on the floor. Yeah. Um, we've already identified a floor, uh, some rooms on the second floor. So that's where we're going today. Yeah. But so many of the rooms look very, very much alike in this yes. hall. But if it's on the second floor, I can probably open it up for you. We do have a room that we're already looking at, but we could try others. So now, where are you from, Reed? I'm actually from Mount Pleasant, Texas. Uh -huh. um, my dad's a football coach, so I actually moved eight times before I graduated. So I like to say Eight that times? Just, yeah, I'm just from East Texas usually. Okay, okay. Um, so that's usually where I was located. Sure. Yeah. Um, Moving up here, there are a couple of other common spaces in the store. One of the larger ones is in here. So when you walk in here, you have access to a public fridge, um, an oven, a stove, a sink, all of these different amenities, which I think is very awesome. Um, Pouches to come sit. Also, if you want to watch a movie, you can use that TV whenever you want. I think it's a great common space to just come and hang out, especially if you don't want to study in your room and you're tired of going to the library. And there's nowhere else to go. I think yeah. it's a really cool space. Yeah. And I can say I've been working for housing for eight years. And anytime I talk to uh, someone who stayed in Gibson, I mean, they've all loved it. Yeah. Unanimously across the board have loved it. So it's a great hall. It's kind of a small hall, but it's yeah. a great hall. No, it's great. It may be small too, but the rooms are usually a lot bigger than you would probably perceive mm -hmm. based on how many people get to stay in this hall. Sure. Um, but before we kind of see how large a room is, we'll go down and look at the restrooms. Yes. Um, so restrooms, the restrooms are important. Typically have, um, it's usually three sinks, three toilets, and mm -hmm. also three showers. I think this one's a little smaller. Yeah. Um, but yeah. There's they, restrooms on both sides as yes. well. Um, and the good thing about these restrooms is although they're in public, they're very private. Mm -hmm. You're able to do what you need to do whenever you're in there. Um, and it's not a bad time. Uh, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Come in here. It's got all these tile floors. And, let's see. Uh, you've been in some of the traditional halls before. Have you ever lived yes. in a traditional hall? Um, I have actually never lived in a hall that has public bathrooms. Okay. So okay. I was lucky to, to, well, not, to not have to do that. What I'm but. told is that you you develop bathroom friends because you end up yes. going to the bathroom at the same yes, time, no, like I getting ready for class. Plenty of friends that like use like lived in like cots or something with a public uh, restroom, and it was never a problem. And also they did develop bathroom friends, which I think is very interesting. <laughs> um, but as you walk in, the first thing that we see is the toilet. So, mm -hmm. of course, there's three stalls. Yep. You know, just a regular looking bathroom. You've seen one, you've seen them all. Yeah, and it's also pretty cool because now, it, since you don't live in a space where you have your own restroom, mm -hmm. they're clean for you. Yeah, um, Which is really true. nice. Um, but another thing is you have two sinks here, so when you brush your teeth, wash your hands, anything like that, they're right here for you. And then the next thing are these showers. So what I really like about these showers is that, of course it has the curtain, but there's a little space when you walk inside. Yeah. Um, so when you, get out, yeah, yeah. when you get out, you can hang up your towel and change and then leave. And I think that's really, really convenient. Um, I do recommend bringing a shower caddy, shower shoes, just having regular bathroom etiquette when it comes to public restrooms. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and then also you have your full-size mirror right here, Right. your mirror's up here, all that Very stuff. good, very good. But yeah, very, very nice. I like the tile in here too, I think it's- Yeah, I actually think it's it's come around in terms of yeah. uh, color, yeah, color sure. ways. Um, so now I think we're heading to room 210, mm -hmm. so we'll take a look at what that room looks like. There again. was a question that came in about from Arden about is there a bench inside the shower area? I don't think I saw I one, but I'm gonna go check just I to make sure. So let's go. We can verify. There's a, uh, yeah, as you pointed, there's kind of like a, uh, an opening room. Yeah. I don't yeah. see one in this one. I don't see one here either. So there's not, in the little dressing room area, there is not a bench. So yeah. maybe if you need one, maybe bring one. Yeah, and that's But there is a hook. There are two hooks, actually. And that's one of the things I also kind of want to talk about with it being an older dorm. There is a lack of accessibility at certain points. And I think just be wary of that when you're moving in. So mm -hmm. you may need to get certain things to make these spaces more accessible. And that is completely fine. Um, housing staff does all that they can to make this, these spaces as accessible as possible. And if you ever have an issue, you can definitely reach out to housing. This, um, this building has been in service since 1937. Yes. Yeah, um, so it's got the 30s style to it. 
But now we're headed into room 210. Okay. Again, um, all these rooms are very, very similar. So, if you they have any are. questions, it probably answers the rest of them. Um, but as we move in here, you can see there's an overhead light with a fan. You get two beds. Um, also, each person gets a desk, a personal little dash drawer, these shelves up here, and there's five sets of plugins um, and outlets. Uh, two closets, one for each person. Mm -hmm. These personal dressers, little cabinets below the sink. Um, and I think it's really nice to have a personal sink, so you don't really have to brush your teeth in the public restrooms. You're, you're here, and you can do it in your room. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can go ahead and open a closet. Yeah, we had a question about, hey, uh, do we need to bring our own vacuum or broom? I would recommend it. I brought my own vacuum and broom, and I'm now moving into a house and I still use it. So, I mean, it'll s serve you in, even after you move out of the dorms. That said, usually at the front desk, we can help you out with some of that stuff, but you probably want your own broom. Yeah, so you don't have to see if it's checked out or mm -hmm, anything. Mm -hmm. um, as we look in these closets, I'm going to go ahead and close this door just to look behind it. There's not really much going on behind here, mm -hmm. um, but on these doors, you get like a little towel rack on here, open it up. I honestly think these closets are really nice. They're very wide mm -hmm. um, and kind of deep. So you can put things, hang things up, but also put things on the shelf, um, which I think is very nice. Yes. And, and these then, hardwood floors. I'm talking about these hardwood floors. Yeah, no, these hardwood floors um, were redone in 2015, um, which kind of gives it um, a modern look while also still being classic, which I think is very nice about Gibson. And I also think that's what is nice about the University of Arkansas, this value of tradition, especially staying in a dorm like this. Um, kind of gives you more of a homey feel and you feel like you're experiencing something your parents may have experienced with their alumni from here. Right. Which I think is really awesome. We had a request to view 209 and which room are we in right now? We're in 210. We're in 210. Yeah. I think let's, let's at least go open up 209. Yeah, That's fine. Do you mind if I give you the key and we'll go? Yeah. I think it may be this one or that one. But let's go open it up. Now you're going to see the mattresses are up. And there'll be the chair up. But that's just because that's how we leave it in its normal state before y'all arrive. Is 209 right here? Right. Jenny, we'll open this up. On, we'll open up your room for you. 209. Hey, good job. What's up? Oh, this one is a little different. Is this is a this single? single room? Okay, yeah. this is a single. That's one of the reasons. So, a single room. Let me pull down this uh, yeah. right here. <laughs> so because this is a smaller residence hall, we have a little time to like, you know, no, really show it off to you. No, for sure. A cool thing about these single rooms is it basically got all the amenities of a double room. So you mm -hmm. still have your two closets, or two closets, this whole dresser set. You get one desk this time instead of two. Um, right, but, right. Yeah. Um, still those overhead shelves. You have a lot of wall space to hang things up as well. Um, one thing that we didn't touch on whenever we were in another room is the fact that there are like lights over the sink that you can turn on and off. Um, okay. This mirror, and also this overhead space. Yeah. So you can definitely store things up there. Um, we get a lot of questions about chairs, so like the desk chairs. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these desk chairs you can actually take apart if you do want to bring your own. You cannot move them out of the room. Yes. But a good idea is if you do want your own chair, you can stick the other desk chair up in those spaces and just store them away until you're getting ready to move out and then put them back together and put them at the desk. Very Great. easy to take apart. Well, I'm so glad we could show off this room for you, but let's head on over back to 210 and we'll do some measurements over there. So this is a single. All right. And we've got a couple questions about measurements. Can you, uh, Arden asks, can you measure the amount of space under the mattress if you put it as high as it will go without lofting? Um, I would say, see these pins? They go every, or little fastens, they go every three inches. I don't offhand know how high this goes right here, but he can measure right there. Now, you can loft this much higher. It's just you need our help to do it because there's a piece that's missing. Yeah, so this is 36 inches. Okay, 36 inches is really at the top of, and that's, that's down at the little pin area yes. right there? Okay, so 36 inches uh, uh, without lofting it. Again, if you want to loft it, you do have to contact us in this particular hall. Yeah. Um, and the best way to contact us is to uh, uh, Google UARC, U-A-R-K, 
and then type in fix it, F-I-X-I-T, and that'll lead to a form. If you do it by the end of this month, before August 1st, we can have it done for you before you arrive. Yeah, which I think is very awesome. I know in the other rooms I've had, you're able to lock your bed yourself. I think maybe that may be whatever, but um, it's a lot easier if it's already looked by the time you get here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, no problem. Glad you're able to measure for the bed skirt. Um, and then under the mattress to the floor, could we yeah. get that as well? And that's at its current setting. It's about 17 inches. 17 inches. Yeah. And I do want to make one note about measurements here is you can go to the housing website under uh, Gibson Hall. About halfway down the page, you'll find an explore section. And in there, you'll find a 3D visual visualization of the yeah. rooms. We recorded them with a special camera. And in the bottom left, you'll see like a tape measure. You can measure the spaces between things. Like the camera we used measures the light. So you can measure that. Very um, Yeah. Uh, there's a question about uh, opening 207. Let's leave it at 209 for now. We've really seen both the styles. Yeah. Gavin, uh, right now we are in Gibson, Gibson Hall. Mm -hmm. That's where we're turning from if you're just tuning yeah. in. Uh, and let's see. How many inches do we have for a tension rod? And there was a question earlier about tension rods. Let me find that yeah. question real quick onto where it would go. Let's see. I'm assuming for a curtain. Yeah, it was definitely for a curtain. Yeah, uh, can we use a tension rod for curtains in the window? Um, and I man. think here it will be difficult. Yeah. There's not a very wide space to put anything up there. What I'm seeing here is that people are using command hooks to hang stuff yeah, up. Yeah. So that's probably your best option. Um, yeah. Yeah, command hooks are pretty good to use for things that where you don't where you can't uh, otherwise do that. Yeah. So yeah, sorry. I, I will say though these um, blinds, do you mind pulling the blinds? Yeah. The blinds are not like block uh, light blackout, but they are pretty good. Yeah, I know awesome. If you grab that one, other one too, we can kind of show. I mean, they get it pretty well. They yeah. kind of shut down the light decently. Okay, moving on to our questions. Just catching up as I scroll through here. Um, can you measure, let's see, how many inches do we have for our tension rod? Fortunately, we can't, we don't know that. Can you measure the distance from the shelf to the wall in 207? We were in 209, but we haven't gone into 207. Or did we go into 207? Uh, I we went into 209. 209. Yeah. Uh, could you measure the distance from the shelf to the wall? The shelf to um, the wall. Are you talking about this shelf? Probably so. We'll try that one. Yeah. That's nine inches. Nine inches, depth right there. Yeah, nine inches depth. Let's see, maybe about 13 inches. 13 inches high. You want to go ahead and give them the width too? Yeah. Um, to be from, yeah, right there. Yeah. Just of this space right here? Mm -hmm. Just in that one. Yeah. This little space is 12 inches. 12 inches, okay. And then, of course, this space is wider. Okay. So. Very good. We'll keep going. Uh, can you share the show the area under the sink? And it does have yeah. a sink, which is pretty cool. We only have it's like one other hall that has an area under the sink. You can open both of them. Yeah, very good. I don't think sure those are actually, and they're not ta tap outs either, to where they come out halfway. Yeah. But there's there's plenty of space to utilize down there. Okay, no problem, Arden. Um, so if you put the mattress as high as you can without being bunk size, you can go pretty high with it. I would. Say we're reconnecting, yeah. If you uh, want to find the exact dimensions of how high you can take it, go to movein.uart.edu, go to the ready to arrive area of that website, and you'll find a number of questions. One will say mattress sizes, lofting information, and there'll be a small table or a table there that'll tell you by haul the exact dimensions of how high you can take it. Okay. Okay, I think we're caught up on our questions here. Um, Reed, you've been here. You're starting your junior year. I know. What, uh, what's the recipe for success? I think, um, and I know this is cliche, but being authentically yourself, 
Mm -hmm. um, and everything that I do, identifying who I am and my lived experiences and the way that I navigate the world is very crucial mm -hmm. for the things that I do. And I think that's true for everyone. So mm -hmm. identifying who you are, finding your niche on campus and being confident in, what, in that niche and who you are is crucial to what Love you're it. doing. And I think um, like acknowledging that as soon as you get here will really help. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, we had a request for the amount of space from under the light. So from the light panel down, can we, can we get that? Fifty inches. Fifty inches from the light panel down. Okay. Well, we're gonna hang out for another second or two and take any more questions you might have. Sorry we didn't get to see every room, but we got to see a single and we got to see a, a, a general kind of room. This is. I mean, almost all of them look like this. Yeah. Okay, one of the questions, since we opened up 209, how many feet from the door frame to the wall? Uh, let's go ahead and go to 209 and we'll do that real quick. How many feet from the door frame to the wall? So from the door frame to the wall? Uh-huh. Very good. You found the, the red dot right there. That's about 196 inches. 196 yeah. inches from the door frame to the wall. And you'll definitely be able to find the dimensions of these rooms online as well mm -hmm. that give you more exact, like how tall the ceilings are and all that stuff. Yeah. And another question about the single, is the shelf in the same place in a single? So this one does not look like it's in the same place. Um, just to, because it's not in the middle, there's mm -hmm. only one bed. Yeah. Um, and we usually put the desk under it, so you have all of this space over here to put. This would honestly be a good space to put a couch, futon, mm -hmm. something like that right here. Um, yeah. Okay, a um, couple follow-ups. Trying to see if a headboard will fit between the shelf and the window. A headboard, oh, uh, you'll have to move this bed. Yeah. If you move the bed, it should. Yeah, it just depends on how tall your headboard is. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it should be able to fit. Yeah, because you've got all that wall right there, at least in the single that you can and use. And these desks move. So yeah, the desks move. are movable too. Um, and then the other wall. So let's go ahead and do um, this way as well. This way. It's about 136 inches. Mm -hmm. 136 inches. Okay. So Arden's being very nice, and so we will pop into 207 just to give them a quick glance because we're on this side, and it doesn't take very long to do that. Oh, okay, yeah, if you don't mind. All right, we will look at 207 for you. Again, keep in mind that the, the mattress will be up because that's the – default position we keep it in that's not being used for conferences or anything else it okay. is an exact replica of the room across the hall it is but we'll give a give a view this is 207 yeah. there we go this is our drawers right there bathroom right there or sink right there okay um how far from that shelf to the window and I think in this case, we're talking about from there to the window. I would say it's about 29 inches to the wall. 29 inches to the wall, and it's basically flush, maybe an inch or yeah. two difference with the window. Okay. The door frame to the shelving wall distance. So door frame to the shelving wall. And if you need me to provide a hand or something like that, maybe we can, I don't know if you can use my hand there. Let's see. If I, there we go. I'm losing it. Oh, it's okay. If not, we'll, we'll just do the best we can on it. Oh, you got my hand. Yeah, it's gonna be about 60 inches. About 60 inches, that's the best. All right, yeah, yeah. Um, good, I'm glad we were able to help you there, Arden. Um, that's caught up then. 
All right. Well, great questions, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. And I'll just say again that this is, you know, people really love this hall. It's a small but mighty group of, of uh, young ladies who live here. And um, you're right in the center of campus, which is really fantastic. So yes, yes. So anyway, I hope you're excited about coming to Gibson Hall this August. And uh, uh, you want to wave us out? Yeah, I can't wait to see y'all this fall. Um, yeah, have a great rest of your day. Thank you.